Page 38, Freight Train. Well, this looks kind of ugly here with eight notes going all over everywhere. Well, I go through the routine I use to learn a new piece of music. We just break it down and see what's in it, see what happens. I look it over, I see it's two pages long. Now that's two pages of music. There are repeat signs, so it's really longer than two pages. But we only have two pages to learn. That's what I'm after. Treble and bass cleft, 4-4 four, four time signature. We have B flats in here, so we're going to use one black key occasionally. Take it one hand at a time, make sure I get the notes and fingering and rhythm. In the right hand, it's here. One and three on here, that puts me in this position. Now there is a note above the staff to play an octave lower, but I'm going to do that later. Right now I'm just going to play the notes as written, so it's going to be up here. So it's one and two and three and four and. This is fun. Go to the second line. Eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. And two and three and. It's got that, that G's tied. Now if that's throwing you, if you don't understand the tie, then take it out and just play all the notes. This is the second line, second measure. One and two. Those are the notes, but just put the tie, just hang on to the note. One and two and three and four and. Hmm. Now go down to the bottom line. Now we have B flats. So third finger's on B, so I'm going to use third finger on the B flat. And yes, remember the rule for accidentals. It's good for the rest of the measure. And so that second B, it's in the measure, it's still, it's a B flat. Rest in. On the top of page 39, we're back to B naturals because the flats at the bottom of page 38 were only good for those measures. So now it's B natural. Okay. So page 39, second line, it's a C and a D together. Try and get them down at the same time. I don't, but maybe you can. Right. Just lower the hand down. It's just. That's supposed to sound like that. I think it has something to do with a whistle. And you play them at the same time if you can. They're not printed above each other like that because there isn't room. Okay, but they come on the same beat, so you play them at the same time. Besides, they're sharing a stem and they're connected. So again, same time. And then the second line, second measure. One and two and three and four and one and. And that G is tied for, re for the rest of the line or whatever. Now, let's go back to the beginning. And it says right hand, one octave lower. So instead of up here where the notes are written, we're just going to come down here. An octave is an interval of an eighth. I don't know if you know what an octave is or not. It's letter to letter. G to G, C to C, F to F, A to A, whatever. So here's a G. If I have a G up here, that's an octave between them. Well, they want an octave lower, so I'm going to go down to this G. So instead of here, I'm going to go here. I'm play it down here. And it's staying down here all the way until page 39, second line. It says, as written, which means you're up here. You have a rest at the end of the first line, so you, you got one beat to come up here and then here. And then at the end of the third line, there's a note to go back down below, here. It doesn't matter if you're repeating or not. Either way, you're still going to go down here and play, continue. Left hand. Well, left hand just got off this pattern of eighth notes. It's here. for the left hand. It must be the wheels turning around or around or something. However, they'll throw you a curve, so you got to watch out. On page 39, third line down, third line now, the pattern changed. So that is different. And again, I'm just rotating here, passing weight from one finger to the other. It's the weight that's pushing the notes down, not the fingers. The finger lowers, and that's what the weight goes on. It's like walking. Which which foot gets the weight? Whatever foot is down. Here we got five feet or five fingers. We're just that's how I'm just rotating. And I, I 
do this all the time because you can pass weight from any finger to any, any finger or any combination of fingers. This. Now, at the bottom of page 39, at the last measure, you get a treble clef after the and then a treble clef. It's a D sharp. It's up here. I'm sure this is going to sound lovely. It has to do with the whistle again, I guess. Or the brake screeching or something. I don't know. But it's up here. Then we put the hands together. Well, this a pattern is just a constant pattern. So we just have to figure out where the right hand goes. It's here. Here. Make sure you lift up for these rests. And then the second line that's here. Here. Bottom page 39, the last measure, because you're down here. You've been down here, and the last measure you're here, and now both hands is written. Well, that means you're moving both hands up. I would prefer not to move both hands at the same time if I can help it. Here, we have a rest in the right hand, so as the left hand plays this, I'm getting the right hand in place. Now, which fingers you use to play these is up to you. It's just use some fingers. So as I do this, I get the right hand hand in place and that way as I go to the second beat all I gotta do is focus on the left hand because the right hand's already there. And definitely I need more coffee for this one. Here. As written. As written means where it's at. So put the hands together, go as slow as you need to, and then go through and get rid of any hesitations anywhere so it's a steady eighth note pulse one and two and three and four, all the way through. Then we'll think about the expression or the articulation. They'll give you a lot. This left hand, I'm going to suggest you just connect all these. All the way through. No matter what the right hand is doing, just connect the left hand. The right hand, you're going to connect them. Well, the first line is rest. You can't. But the second line, connect it. Connect all these. They're slurred. Okay. Uh, page 39, second line, you get uh, accents. Play a little louder. Claps the wrist each time you do it. Don't claps it a lot. Just claps the wrist a little bit. Stay relaxed. Huh? Then the dynamics. Uh, it starts P at the beginning, and this is pretty much for the right hand. The left hand needs to stay in the background, out of the way. That can be a challenge because you're busy. And when you're busy like this all the time, you just tend to get louder. It'll just happen. It'll just happen by itself. You get louder. So you have to watch out. Make an effort. Keep control. Keep the left hand in the button. This soft. So. The second line, moderately loud. Mezzo forte. Whatever you think solar loud is. This left hand is still soft. And you're staying there pretty much until page 39, second line, where it's forte or loud. The left hand can come up a little bit, but it's still in the background. But you have accents on these. That takes the right hand up to very loud. I'm thinking about it. Make sure you're lifting up for the rest in the right hand. Uh, page 39, third line, and the second measure. You're lifting up on B3. When I play the B here, you're coming up for the, for the right hand. Please be accurate with these rests and lifting up. When you repeat, you go back to over uh, second line on page 38. That's moderately loud again. But when you go on, the second time, you stay loud for the rest of the piece. Then we talk about the speed. Well, think of a train, and they have a note at the beginning, start slowly and softly, gradually increase speed and volume, that means get louder, little by little as the train gets up to go. You're gonna go from soft up to medium loud, moderately loud. There's a repeat sign on the first line, so you can play it twice. So you got four measures here to do it in. I suggest maybe a measure at a time. So the first measure, you're soft, slow. 
It's like a train starting off. Next measure, then we'll be a little louder, a little, a little faster. And I can repeat it, back a little louder, a little faster. Something like that. You have to kind of experiment with it. Just make sure it lasts for four full measures. Don't get too loud and too fast too soon. And how fast your train goes is up to you. I mean, if you were going to sing it, how fast would you sing it? Now, chugging and a huffing, whatever. I still need more coffee for this. It's up to you. If you don't sing it, you could probably take it a little faster. Then on page 39, the last two lines. The next to the last line, there's a note between the staves to gradually get slower and softer. So now the train's going to go down to a stop. Well, you're loud. So you gradually, I, again, I do it like a measure at a time or so. Well, maybe every two beats. And then very slow up here. And I would do this loud, a whistle's loud. So I, I, they don't say to do this loud, but I would do this loud. But accents, loud and accents, and let them have it, both hands. It doesn't make any sense to me for a train whistle to go. To, to, what kind of a train is that? I think that's an error in the music anyway. They also show pedal there in the last measure. I don't recommend using pedal in this piece at all, but if you want pedal, again, it's for the whistle. That You just push the pedal down right after you play the note in the measure, and leave it down uh, to the end. And the hands and the note pedal come up at the same time. Yeah. The fermata, you just hang on to that however long you think it should be. If I do it with a metronome, I'll do it, hold it for four counts instead of two. I just double the value. Otherwise, you feel it. Now, if you are going to use pedal at the end, then make sure your foot is on the pedal at the beginning. Don't be putting your foot on the pedal and taking it off during the piece. I'm not going to show pedal here because that's all they're using it for, but otherwise that's what it is. Yeah.